Good afternoon and welcome to Purdue University and the Serious Computer Security Seminar. Our speaker today is uh, Associate Pro or Assistant Professor Sen Chun Zhu from Penn State University, uh, the Department of Computer Science and uh, Electrical Engineering. Is that right? Uh, Computer yeah. Science and Engineering. Uh, his topic is towards events, secure unobservabil unobservability, that's a hard word to say, <laughs> and sensor networks. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. You. okay, thank you for the introduction. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. So this is a great honor to be here you know, in the, our very prestigious uh, engineering school, <laughs> especially Penn State is also you know, one of them. So today uh, my topic will be uh, on uh, towards event source on observability in sensor networks. So this is a joint work with my uh, collaborators, uh, Yi Yang, Ming Shao, uh, Bu Wen, Guo Hong. So uh, in the beginning, let me first uh, give some uh, brief introduction to sensor networks, in case you don't know yet. So with the advance of this uh, uh, micro-magnetic uh, uh, techniques, you know, so now we have uh, some s small, uh, tiny devices called the sensors. So these sensors, they can... Uh, uh, they, they, can, they have this uh, wireless communication capability, and they can self um, self organize into network. So basically, you, you have a, you can form multi hub communication to the remote place. So this sensor they can also monitor the environment. So you know, so for example, this uh, temperature, uh, humidity, you know, pressure, all, all these uh, different types of sensors. And also, you can see from this figure, this uh, sensor they, now they are getting much cheaper, and the, also this uh, the size is getting also smaller. So, as a result, you can uh, uh, see these sensors. You know, they form this uh, uh, multi-hop communication, and they they can uh, uh, send the data to the remote place, the base station. In this scenario, so you can imagine there are some uh, applications for this. You know, one is uh, uh, especially a military application where you can use that sensor to monitor this uh, battlefield and see if there's some uh, you know uh, some some biological or chemical weapon. You know, if, and also, if there's a uh, enemy uh, tank passing by, you know, so this kind of application. And also, you can use that for environmental application, the fire, flood uh, detection, or for health applications. You know, some of them uh, you can see from this slide. Okay, so for this uh, specific talk, I will be focusing on this uh, uh, problem. So in this case, you can see that there's a, a base station, and also there's some uh, animals, and also there's hunters. So in this case, the, uh, the sensors are used to uh, monitor the environment and to report what it has uh, detected. So in this case, the, if, if the sensor is, is somehow knows that, uh, that there's an elephant in the, uh, in nearby, it will send a message. In, in this case, right, the, here's the, the event type, which is the ele elephant. And also you have this uh, location, right, the second part. So the location, and also you have a, the third part is the timestamp, like when you detect this uh, uh, elephant. So you send this back, uh, information back to the base station. And in the, this is a normal case. But for the hunter, it may uh, uh, leverage this information to trace back to the source to find where is the elephant, try to kill them somehow. So this is the problem setting. So we will, uh, we will be uh, focusing on. And the, in, in the early, uh, another work in uh, Southern Workshop, uh, 2004, uh, they model this as the uh, panda hunter problem. So in this case, the so the so, so the these sensors will send back this you know the panda is here this kind of information to the uh, base station. So so the, this is the the base station so in this location. So their idea is uh, something called the uh, uh, phantom routing. So idea is uh, when you detect this some um, uh, events in, in this uh, location, you will, you will first uh, uh, send this. Uh, Event message in the surrounding area to a random walk, just uh, you know randomly and walk from you know one location to another location. So once certain uh, condition uh, is met, then this is uh, forwarded to the towards the base station. And uh, the final step, when it is uh, close to the base station, maybe you know three hops away from this uh, base station, then you can do a flooding of this uh, packet to this uh, nearby uh, location. So here you can see that the you know the, this uh, packet once once it reaches this area, then it's flooding flooded in this area. So then, so the attacker here, the hunter is, uh, is assumed to be nearby to the base station. So now you, you want to, based on this, uh, monitor the traffic, the, the trace back to the source. So this is the model. So the, 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 the hunter is, uh, 
is nearby this uh, base station. Based on the receiver, the packets want to trace where's the, the source. And their idea is to use the phantom routing so to, to confuse the, this uh, hunter. Because for, uh, the, for, the, for the hunter to trace back to the, uh, uh, the source, every time you only uh, can trace one hop. And from where you receive this one, then you, you go to that, that location. So next time, from that location, if you receive another uh, packet, then you can go you know, one, st uh, one step uh, closer to a base station. So hopefully in this way, you can uh, catch the real source. So this is their uh, idea of phantom routing. So in this case, the, their attack model is uh, use a local attack. Basically, the, this attack only has this uh, one hop uh, capability. Of, uh, you, you, you only know uh, this uh, message from, the, from the, the, the previous hop, from where you receive it. You don't know, the, you know the, the, this other, uh, where it comes from, from multi hops away. So the, based on, uh, on their paper, they said, OK, now if uh, uh, the attacker has this uh, hearing capability of three hops, so then you can basically you can uh, uh, you can uh, recover trace back to the source with 97 percent uh, of accuracy. So which means the with the more the capability of this uh, 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 attacker, you can uh, hear a bigger range, then you can uh, trace back to the source easily. So now how about a global attack? So global attack is means uh, in this case the, the attacker can know every message transmitted transmitted in the network. So in this case, so in this case, um, you can think about this phantom routing scheme. It will not work because if the attacker knows that every packet, right, so you of course know the source immediately. You don't have to do this hop by hop trace back. So this will not work. So our key observation is uh, to achieve this uh, uh, source anonymity, or what we call the event unobservability, and this uh, global attack model. So we have to introduce dummy traffic. Think about this, if there's no dummy traffic, everything's real, right? So then whenever there's a packet transmitted in the network, originated from the network, there must be something going on there. Right? So that's the, the very easy you know, for the attacker to find the source. So now it's, if we introduce dummy traffic, and we have to change, to change the, uh, introduce dummy traffic to, to hide this, uh, this, the real messages. So now the issue is, uh, if you have to use dummy traffic, so how do you generate dummy traffic? And uh, another issue is uh, how do you forward them? Uh, if you forward them, you know, all, all of them to base station, then you know, there will be big uh, overhead. So that's the, the focus of this talk, to answer these two questions. Please uh, feel free to ask if you have any questions. OK, so uh, the first part of our contribution is that we provide something called a statistically strong event source and observability and a global attack model. So this solved the first problem, how to generate this uh, dummy traffic in the every uh, sensor. And the second uh, part, we propose some optimization techniques to minimize the network traffic. So in this way, you can filter out this dummy traffic, traffic on their way to base station. So the one uh, simple solution for dummy traffic generation is just uh, use constant rate. So every sensor transmits, uh, like for example, one packet per second or you know, one packet uh, per minute. Right, so if you've always uh, forced this rule, then for a take a point of view, it will not uh, know anything, right? because you, the network always be, uh, behaves the same way. Even there's a uh, real uh, uh, events packet and all dummy traffic, if you follow this way. And uh, you can see that this is a you know, perfect pri uh, privacy can uh, achieve. But, it's, uh, but in reality, it's very hard to set this uh, uh, appropriate rate. So what is it should be the uh, the the the, the rate, uh, for this uh, dummy traffic tra generation, but if the the, you know, the real message uh, transmission rate is too high, you know then you have a uh, lot of packets and queued up in the local buffer, and also another issue is uh, it has the uh, fixed average latency. So basically, if you think about it, it's like uh, if you trans uh, transmit one packet uh, every one second, so so during this one second uh, uh, one second, this real event can arrive at any time. So on average, the switching time is uh, half of this uh, interval. So in this case, it's a uh, half a minute or you know, half a uh, second.